There you are, Kane Echo Tyne. Commander Aldine has asked me to convey to you the following information. At present, we are looking into reports of missing relatives of the cranial Upi. With the cooperation of the Silver Griffins, we are currently searching for any clues as to their whereabouts. Thanks to the concerted efforts of Ragenfrid and the others, the general public has been willing to cooperate with our investigation. Though many still harbor feelings of distrust for the collaborators and their kin, they've grown more receptive to our cause on the whole. Erin Vault's been making steady progress in preparing for the memorial ceremony. He plans to host a meeting between the various community leaders to go over the finer details. In fact, he was wondering whether you could assist in delivering the invitations. If you can spare the time, you should be able to find him in the mercantile district. Anyway, that's all for now. I've a few other matters to attend to, so if you'll excuse me, duty calls. Thanks for coming. It should come as no surprise that planning a memorial ceremony for a whole bloody nation would keep a man busy, but Pyralg, this is something else. The hardest part's been gathering information on those who died in the war, especially when it comes to the skulls and other conscripts. And they're the ones we need to treat most carefully. If we don't acknowledge the crimes of our kin in all their painful truths, then we do a disservice to their victims living and dead. But if we let people paint them as monsters who did monstrous things, things we believe we would never do, then we perpetuate a different but no less dangerous life. As for preparing the event itself, I'll be holding a meeting with members from each of the settlements around Girobania. I've sent invitations to most of them already, but I was hoping you'd help me with the last two. There's Emraznan in the Peering Stones and Sarisha in Viranilyar. I'll give you one for each. To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if they refused, considering how their people suffered at the hands of the Skulls. But I hope we can remind them that deep down, we're all just people trying to survive, to protect our loved ones. We may have driven the Empire from our lands, but as long as we hold fast to the grudges born of their attempts to divide and set us against one another, we'll never be free of their legacy of cruelty. With that in mind, I've included an account of my experiences with the Silver Griffins and the people I've met. Victims, collaborators, their friends and their family, men and women who lived through it all. Survivors. Even if they refuse to join the ceremony, at least they will know, and hopefully understand, our reasons for holding the event. Granted, I've not had much practice in writing important letters, but I think they'll get the message. You being the one to deliver them will make a world of difference, I'm sure. Take care, won't you? Neko team. What a rare treat this is. Had I known you were coming, I would have prepared a feast. Greetings, friend. It has been too long since last we spoke. What brings you to my village?
so if the rumors are true. I need not read this letter in full to know its contents. I understand that Rad and Fritz volunteers are working to support the families of those lost in the war, which few will deny is a worthy cause. But to include the relatives of the cranial Lupi. The skulls watched the Empire slay us in our thousands and still they turned their cloaks and fought for our oppressors. And you would ask us to mourn the deaths of these curs alongside their victims. To dismiss it out of hand would be discourteous. Very well. Family. As none, my tribe is my family, and I know all too well the responsibility that brings. I would do anything to protect them. Anything. Loyalty, pride, conscience. My very soul. All are meaningless if I cannot ensure the safety of those I love. I suspected some skulls have been faced with the self-same choice, but to see how their kin suffered, uh, I cannot say I do not understand. Though I wish that I did not. Their crimes will never be forgiven. They cannot be. But I, and any others who are willing, can offer our prayers for these tortured souls and the men they could have been. I accept the invitation. Not on behalf of the M tribe, but as M Rasna, though I will put the question to my people that they may decide for themselves. I am also eager to make the acquaintance of the person who wrote this letter. He is not going to turn a blind eye to the bitter truth, painful though it is to confront. The meeting will be the perfect opportunity to take his measure. I will convey your friend's intent to the rest of the tribe before attending the memorial ceremony. Those who cannot support it will not interfere. You have my word. We Vera have long memories. We will remember your deeds, Akon Slayer. We Vera have long memories. We will remember your deeds, Icon Slayer. Welcome. To what do we owe the pleasure of your visit? Then it is as I suspected. There have been rumors that such a ceremony would take place. Although you have traveled far to make this invitation, I must decline. We cannot mourn the loss of the fallen if the Crania Lupi are to be counted among them. Like the Kalyana, they chose to aid the Galian oppressors, killing and bleeding for those who would pillage our lands. Cowards and traitors all. And are we to assume that Kalyana who died fighting for the Empire will be honored as well? If so, that is all the more reason for us to refuse.
if you insist. No one was spared suffering in the occupation. Not the resistance, not the collaborators, not the families of both, no one. That so many would die in shame and ignominy, having sold their souls only to lose everything, is a tragedy, and a lesson. If they are forgotten, then the lesson of their folly is forgotten. For the sake of this land we call home, I will join you in remembrance, and implore my people to do the same. In mourning may we strengthen our ties with our neighbors as well. By together facing our past we can build a foundation for lasting peace and prosperity. It would be my honor to attend the proposed meeting, and I look forward to personally thanking your friend Aaron Wald for his dedication. I and my peers have much to learn from the example he has set. Would I be correct in guessing your friend does not often scribe such letters? I could not help but notice he had foregone the usual platitudes and fanciful phrasing. His directness was most refreshing. So, how did you fare in the fringes? They said that about me. It's rare for me to get such glowing praise, especially from renowned leaders like Sarisha and M. Raznan. More importantly, though, they agreed to attend the meeting, and I've got you to thank for that. After all, I imagine it's hard to turn down an invitation when it's hand-delivered by the warrior of light herself. Before I get ahead of myself, though, I must remember that this is only the beginning. Bringing everyone together is one thing. Coming to an agreement on an extremely divisive issue is a different kettle of fish entirely, as Her Grace was quick to point out. But as she's taught me, if our cause is just and our hearts are true, those of like mind will surely answer the call. And answer it they have. While there are bound to be differences of opinion, I'm sure there's nothing we can't overcome if we put our minds to it. To that end, I was hoping you could join us, if you've the time to spare. There are still a few loose ends Radenfried and I need to tie up beforehand, so we'll meet you in the palace as soon as we can. Just having you there will make a world of difference. Once we've got everything in order, Radenfried and I will meet you in the palace. Are we not men? Do we not bleed? Do we not deserve to be free? Yeah. I mean, no. Here for the meeting, yes? So while we all agree upon the importance of the ceremony, we recognize that the inclusion of the cranial upi will be distressing for many. I too lost family at their hands, and I would never ask others to forgive and forget. But for all their crimes, they were Aelamuns, just like us. None made the decision to side with Garlemald lightly. 
They had a choice, and they chose to betray us. What does that have to do with it? Brothers and sisters, arguing will avail us not. The fate of Alamigo rests on my shoulders and yours. On those of every man, woman, and child that calls these lands home. To uphold our honor. To strive for prosperity. To protect our loved ones. We all know the weight of these responsibilities. Twas that self-same weight which drove many of our people to serve our oppressors, misguided as it was. And though they chose a different, unconscionable path, in the end, we all wanted the same thing. To deliver our families from persecution, that they might live to see one more day. Because another day in shame and self-hatred was still better than none at all. The regretful dead are survived by their despair, a despair which threatens to drag us all into an abyss from where there is no escape. Know that it surely will if we welcome it into our hearts out of disdain for those we cannot forgive. But we Alamigans will not be so easily defeated. We will stand united and conquer this menace. Every Alamidon who fought and died did so in the hopes that one day, we would be free. And we are free. We are free. By the blood of our fallen brothers and sisters, we are free. Free to lock away the pain and pretend it has no power over us, until it festers and takes us in our beds. And free to lay it bare and let it breathe. To acknowledge and to mourn our people at their best, and their worst. The past is ours to bear, all of it. For ourselves, and for future generations, so that they needn't suffer like we did. Let us make Ayla Middle a nation where no man is left behind. Where he can make all the wrong choices, and still be afforded the chance to make a right one. We see a lot of important people coming and going around here. Even though I should be used to it by now, I can't help feeling nervous. That went better than any of us could have hoped for. You have my gratitude for your part in the proceedings, but we both know who the real hero of the day was. This was all Ehrenwald's idea, and it was his words that finally won over the naysayers. Now that we have the community leaders on our side, we should have a much easier time convincing the rest of the citizenry. Of course, holding the ceremony is by no means our final objective. No matter what we say, some will refuse to attend. It is my hope, however, that it will still serve to provide a measure of closure for us all, and to ease the plight of the vulnerable and ostracized. It would be a valuable opportunity to present a former skull in a more positive light. On the other hand, I don't need to tell you how unpredictable she can be, 
and that's before taking her echo into consideration. But that's a conversation for another day. Go and get some rest. You've earned it. <laughs>